Hi, thanks for using my court coach. I'm Sarah and I'll be your instructor today as we discuss the spousal partner or family support order attachment, also known as form FL343. As with every court form, you want to list and include the identifying case caption information at the top. Below that, um, since this is not a standalone form, but a form that is typically attached to an order, um, you want to identify what document this is being attached to. It can either be a findings and order after hearing, a judgment, a restraining order after hearing, a stipulation or a written agreement of the parties or other. And if other, please specify what that document is that it's being attached to. Below that, you want to list the income of each party that was considered by the court in making this order. If a party is receiving uh, any sort of public assistance, you would mark this box to identify that, list total gross monthly income, um, monthly deductions. I, if the court specifically identifies certain deductions, you can total those up and include those if there's any hardship deductions. Um, and again, those are specific deductions um, that the court can consider giving. There's a separate video on those if you'd like to review that. But if the court does give a hardship deduction, you would identify the amount of that deduction and list it here and then include each party's net monthly disposable income. If a court is making an order for temporary support, in other words, not a final determination of sp uh, spousal support, then you can attach the printout that the court uh, came up with um, to this order. If it's a final determination of support, the court cannot rely on a support calculator and has to consider a whole host of other factors that are included in Family Code Section 4320 and which are also covered in the form FL157, that's the spousal support attachment. Um, box number three identifies uh, just some basic information for this order. If this is modifying a prior order that was made, you would mark box 3A and list the date of the order that this is modifying. Uh, 3B, um, you want to include the number of years and months that the parties were married to. 3C, you would mark if this is a domestic partnership and you would list the um, span of the partnership again in years and months. Um, if the court finds that the bo both parties are self-supporting and makes that an actual finding, you would mark box 3D. And 3E, if the court makes a finding as to the marital standard of living, which again, they are required to do as part of a final determination of spousal support, then you would describe that here. And again, that's usually going to be lower class, middle class, upper class, and any other details the court provides, you would include here. If the court reserves on determination of a final spousal support order, meaning that they will deal with that issue at a later date, you would mark box four. If the court decides that a party can no longer request spousal support ever again as a result of this marriage and thus terminates jurisdiction over the issue of spousal support, you would mark box five. And as to which party that applies to, if it applies to both parties, you can mark both boxes. Um, if the court does make an order for one of the parties to pay the other spousal support or partner support as a result of this marriage or partnership, then you would identify here the party that is the payor of the support. Um, if it's temporary support, again, not a final determination, but just a uh, order pending further court order, then you'd mark temporary, otherwise leave that blank. Um, mark spousal support, family support, or partner support, whatever the order happens to be, the amount per month, the beginning date, and if a end date is specified, you would include that here. A lot of times in a long-term marriage, though, the court is not going to specify an end date. If the court makes orders specifically on the frequency of payments within the month or when the payment should be made during the month, then you would include that here, payable on the blank day of the month. That's usually going to be the first day of the month um, or other, if there's any other orders made by the court as to how that payment is to be made. A lot of times the courts do not specify without request specifically from a party to do so, how the payments are to be made. So it will not be considered late unless it's not paid by the last day of the month. Um, if the court makes orders specifically as to whether the payment should be made by check, money order or cash, you would mark this box. If the court um, does not stay a wage garnishment, then that means an earnings assignment can issue. Um, an earnings assignment is just like a garnishment. The 
words are used interchangeably. It just means that you're able to submit a form to um, the payor's employer for collection of that payment directly from the employer. Um, if, on the other hand, the court does order for the earnings assignment to be stayed, then you would mark box D, and that means at this time you are not going to be garnishing wages. And um, if the court does order the stay of the earnings assignment, they might order a number of days um, before the payment is considered late, in which case the stay would be lifted. Um, oftentimes in a long-term marriage, the court is going to issue a Gavron warning. That's a warning under the case in remarriage of Gavron that puts a party collecting support on notice that they need to make reasonable efforts to become self-supporting. And if the court does make that in order, then you want to mark box seven and the party that was placed under the Gavron warning. Uh, if the court orders that the parties must notify each other regarding a change of employment, then mark box eight. If this is an order for family support, you would box, mark box nine. An order for family support is where child support and spousal support are included in one bundled amount without allocation as to how much is to go to child support, how much is to go to spousal support. Um, these aren't very common anymore just because of tax implications. Uh, but if the court does make an order for family support, then mark box nine. And this is just advising you that because child support is also involved, the forms that typically go with a child support order, which are the child support case registry form, which is an FL191 and a notice of rights and responsibilities an FL192 also need to be filed. Um, finally, box number 10, if this is being attached to a restraining order, you would mark this box and this just lets the payor of the support know that even if the restraining order expires, that does not necessarily mean that these support orders expire. Finally, box 11 is our catch-all other orders. If there's any other orders pertaining to the payment of spousal support, family support, or partner support, those orders would be specified in this section. I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.